So here we go. How to attack man versus a dog. First, let me uh, express to you that I am not an educator. I am rather an experiencer. I experience and uh, receive confidence in my life, in my life lessons. I understand uh, more than I did when I was much younger. As we all do. So again, here we go. How to attack a man versus a dog. This topic is huge. I mean, I kept thinking, how am I going to get all of this information in, say, 15 minutes or less? And there wasn't any. spirit of knowledge and wisdom, understanding of how male and female interact. I pray for that, that, that love, that understanding, so I can express it to the world. And it really is my prayer that the women get it. They enjoy viewing and listening, and it really touches their hearts. I'll know what I need to know when I need to know it. And I trust that I am here to be truly helpful. I am here to represent she himself. And I trust you. So, again, how to attract a man versus a dog. First of all, like I said, I'm, I'm not a male basher. I believe in love and um, I love men. I, I love them. I've learned to love them unconditionally, and I can say that that's one of the major, major factors in relationships, loving him unconditionally. More so than that, or even equal to, loving yourself unconditionally, understanding that you're going to be challenged. You're gonna be challenged, you're gonna make mistakes, and then, then in the universal plan it said that there are no mistakes. But if you recognize that who you're being in this relationship is really up to you, right? So, so I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm doing my, I'm going to do my best to, well, I'm doing it, not going to. I am doing my best to condense my thoughts, but to, to get right to the point and be as clear as possible. Um, so bear with me again, just bear with me. So the first thing is mindset. How to attract a man versus a dog has to do with mindset. If you don't believe you're worthy of a good man, guess what? You're not going to attract a good man. It all has to do with the law of attraction and manifestation. Beliefs. Do you walk around with limiting beliefs? Do you look in the mirror and say, oh, you know, I really can't get the type of man that I want. Now, like attracts like. If you say that you want a man that's powerful and, and he knows what he wants and um, he has a great career, um, you know, good money, and, and all of this is relative, and he uh, treats you well, he takes care of himself, he loves his mother, <laughs> He respects women. Now reverse that on yourself. Do you take care of yourself? Do you love your father? What are, what are your views about your father? Are you looking for a father figure? Think about that. Are you looking for that man to be a father as opposed to your husband or your boyfriend, your man, that, that special somebody in your life? Because remember this, like attracts like. Whatever energy you're vibrating at that time, within that, it can be a, 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 a short time span, but then that energy is emanated. It travels like a wave and it goes out into the universe and it latches on. It's like, you know how we used to do that dance like this. It latches on to somebody and boom, you meet. You may 
say, well, how in the world did, did I attract this? But your energy, your vibration, your frequency went out on your behalf. Went out and draw, drew in that man to you. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, some women will wonder if they're worthy. You have to know that you're worthy. You have to love yourself. That's why I love the name of my business. It came to me in spirit, raise yourself. This whole thing, everything that I do in life, when I, every breath I take is about raising myself. Every person I talk to, it's about raising yourself, raising your vibration in, in, in terms of how you're thinking about yourself, what you think about yourself, what you think about a particular topic, what do you think about attracting a man versus a dog? It has to do with your mindset. Because if you love yourself, right? If you believe to an absolute knowing that you're worthy, if you understand that the thoughts that you carry around each day, those thoughts become thought forms. They pull together and they begin to think and they create from your one thought. And being that we're talking about how to, to attract a man versus a dog, if you're thinking in terms of, I'm a woman, I can stand on my own. I love myself. I would never belittle myself. I would never trash myself, right? I would never put into my body horrible substances, vices, and drugs, and, and, and alcohol. I mean, you know, all in moderation, but I would not abuse myself. Therefore, how you treat yourself is how a man will treat you. And that really applies to anyone, how they will treat you. But being that we're talking about how to attract a man, we'll stay on that subject. So be mindful of who you're being, what you're thinking, what you're having in your life, what you're doing in your life. If you say, if you have conflicting thoughts and you say something like, well, I want a relationship, but I really don't because it's going to cost too much, you know, him, his asking me where I'm going, uh, what I'm doing. I don't really want to change. I really, really don't because it's, I'm like set in my ways and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like too old, too mature. I don't want to put up with, um, you know how we do. We go from the extreme of I'm being celibate. I don't want to have sex right now. Um, because I want to save it for that main man, that, that special one. I've been there too. How long does that last? It's, it's, all, it's sort of similar to someone who says, I quit smoking. I have this wonderful girlfriend. She always quits on Mondays. You know who you are, Missy. She always quits on Mondays and she says, Oh yeah, oh yeah, I quit smoking. That's it, Georgette. No more smoking. And then I'll ask her, well, did you quit? I just quit yesterday. Oh, Monday? Yeah, yeah. And, and then the following week, she's like, only had one. I just had one, one cigarette, but I'm, 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 that's it. And then I'm like, okay, when was it it? Yesterday. When? You mean Monday? Yeah. So this, I've known her for... For a very long time so we laugh about that all the time but anyway back to um, back to you know uh, who you're being and what you're putting out in the universe be very mindful of that if you want that particular man you have to be that if you want someone in shape who takes care of himself who eats right who loves you who's gonna take you out and, and do things for you and laugh with you play with you wonderful sex you have to be these things to, for yourself. Like, I'll go out. I make plans to go out or to go away or, or do something because I enjoy my company. 
So you have to enjoy your company. And you have to be pleased with yourself. Work on you. Look at, take a list. Like I, I, I actually, actually have like a whole layout. It's like the master plan. Remember um, Pee Wee Herman when he takes his neighbors downstairs to the to his basement and he has this like this big old whiteboard and, and, and pointer and he's and he has a, a light bulb and he's like so serious and he's like exhibit A this is this is uh that's me but that's me with myself sit, sitting and I'm telling me this is how it is because I'm very methodical very detailed and I'm I'm just a deep thinker and I really examine myself. So my point is, I mean, you may not be as extreme as I am because it depends on your how you think, your, your mode of thinking, your patterns. You have to be true to that. Again, going back to raise yourself, raise yourself is all about your being true to yourself. You're learning about who you are and what you want. I can only be the example and express to you as powerfully as I can, as clearly as I can, and as aligned as I can. And I can be that example, but take my example and, and refine it to fit your world, because it's not about my world, this is about you. I'm doing what I love to do. I love teaching, I love healing. And healing is the potential, the, the uh, capacity, the ability to give information, to give knowledge, wisdom, to show the way, to be an example for. Out of that comes healing. The rest is up to you. If you let it in, if you open up your heart to what I'm saying and really take it in and think for yourself. Again, raise yourself, raise your vibration. I am so passionate about women and about who I can be to you to help you find your way. I love this shit. It skips me, but I do. I love it. It, it, it. it just, it's like, you know, like what came to mind is a burning bush, right? And it was in one of these old movies, Moses or whomever, he went up to the mountain to talk to God. And there's this burning bush just there with light and everything. And I know I'm a little dramatic at times. That's why I try to calm down, but tonight I can't. And I don't even think going forward I will. But the burning bush of knowledge, the white light, all of that, I just see all of that. And I'm like, please tell me more. I meditate, I pray, I write, I... I reflect, I, I do everything to get in, get in touch with myself. And this is what I'm, I'm asking you. I'm pleading with you. Move away from the television sets. I don't know how many you have in your home. And they're not even called television sets anymore. They're like flat screens and all that. But anyway, move away from that and into your heart, your soul. Do you know how hearts communicate with each other? That's another subject. We'll talk about it later, but they do communicate with each other. So take care of that heart, that energy that you're putting out into the world by first knowing thyself. You cannot attract the type of man that you think, you think about, that you think you want unless you are clear about what that is. If you have these conflicting thoughts, you will attract all sorts of types of men. So one is gain clarity about who you are. Take care of yourself because like attracts like. Um, the other thing is know that you're worthy. You are so worthy, so worthy. I, I tell my daughters that all the time. My daughters are 20 and 28 and I have four grandchildren and I'll be 50 in January. And with this maturity, I will call it, with this maturity and, and life experiences and being a mother to females, a lot of times we know our daughters don't always listen to us. I mean, did we really listen to our parents? You know, we basically, as we, we matured, we began to say, oh wow, now, now I get what she was telling me, my mother was telling me, my father. Um, 
but with my daughters, I, I express to them as much as I can, but they're, I don't know everything. You don't know everything. So we will be challenged by it. Um, I tell them to, to love themselves, but a lot of times we'll give that wisdom and the best teacher is experience, which we know. So I know it's painful to watch your daughters go through these relationships and go through all this pain. I mean, hey, you, you go through this. You know, whether you're a mother or not, you go through this yourself. I've gone through it. And as we mature, we gain a better, a clearer understanding of what love is. I'm here to, to really, full as fully as possible, and I know I'm not going to get everything in right now, but what I'd like to say is I'm, I'm going to cover this topic in other ways as well, other titles, but it's basically really loving yourself, looking within yourself, and asking what is it that I truly desire? What is it that really moves me? What's my passion in life? What makes me happy? Uh, why why am I not in a relationship? Not saying a relationship is everything, but since we're talking about how to attract a man versus a dog, you have to think about, well, what's stopping me from being in a relationship? You have to change the story you're telling. If you say you'd like a loving relationship, I don't care what happens, keep telling that story. You can tell it to yourself, you can write it to yourself, you can speak it. For example, I recently left a relationship. It was a mutual agreement because not all relationships are going to last a lifetime. We will experience different types of men in our lives. But through those experiences, through those relationships, we learn more about what we don't want and what we do want. It's a must. It's a necessity. We need to experience the contrast because out of the contrast, we gain clarity around our truth. And out of our truth, due to our maturity, then we begin to gain, we begin to attract more and more of who, well, the type of guy we want, but we have to gain that experience first. And I know you're saying, like me, it's like, well, how many relationships do I have to go through before I get to the one. But check this out. You've always had the one. The one is you. I know you don't want to hear this. May not, or maybe you do. The one is you. The first relationship you must, must establish and maintain and nurture and love and cherish is the relationship you have with yourself. I love me. I love me. I, I really, do. people know I am in love with myself. Not in a conceited way, not in an, in an arrogant way, none of the negative ways. I love myself because I've come to realize at almost 50 that this is it. This is my life. If I'm waiting on anybody, anybody, a man, a child, a job, a relationship, um, a happy day, whatever. If I'm waiting on that, what am I doing now? Because this is all we have is now. What am I doing now in the moment? What am I doing? Waiting. I am not waiting for anything. In this moment, I am enjoying the moment now. I am laughing now. I am living now. I am dreaming now. I am inventing now. I am creating now. So for that man, I'm, I already know. I already know he's wonderful. He treats me wonderful because I treat myself wonderful. Wonderfully, he loves me. He adores me because I love and adore myself. We go, we go away together because I go away by myself. I can go with girlfriends or I can go by myself, whatever. I can enjoy my own company. So I've, I've come to realize that the truth lives within me first. So get used to that and tell the story that you want to come true in your life. I, I, I being that I, I had just gotten out of a relationship, I say just, it was in May, May 2012, out of a relationship, someone I was with for like four and a half, just about four and a half years, wonderful guy. But sometimes you get to a point where you realize, okay, 
either we've outgrown each other or we really don't want the same things. One is going this way, the other is going that way. What naturally happens is the relationship expires. You, if you're mature enough, which he and I are, we were like, you know what? We've been in and out of this relationship. And, and we had a lot of good times. I mean, beautiful times. We get along so well. But it's just that our energies vibrate. Now, they're going to be different, but they, they, the frequency of our energies are, are so, I would say, so contrasted that it, it's, it took us in, in opposite directions. Which is, if you're real and you're acknowledging that life happens, you come to the conclusion that, you know what? I love you so unconditionally that I will let you go. I'll let you go and I'll walk away as well. And I wish him well and he, wished, he wishes me well. And that's the way it happens sometimes. But on the flip side of that, sometimes people will, will look at it as it's a failure or, um, you know, they were unloved. And it's not so. People outgrow each other. People change. People expand. Um, that's, that's just life. So just know that he's, he's there. He's just waiting for you. He is waiting for you, darling. He is waiting for you. The question is, where are you? What is it? Who is it? How is it? Where is it? Isn't it beautiful how a man can just, you're like, you, you weren't even expecting it? That new person just seems to come out of nowhere, but he was on his way in essence because of your thought process and how you're feeling. You attract that particular type of man. For example, say you attract um, a dog, and I don't like calling guys dogs, but this is just... Um, for lack of a better word, someone who doesn't treat you the way you want to be treated. Um, he gets over on you. He, uh, he may beat you, you know, abuse you. Um, see, the thing is, he doesn't realize who he is either. And I say he doesn't realize who he is either because if you let him in, sorry to say, if you let him in, then... He is only a reflection of who you're being. You don't hear me. Do you hear me? I love when they say that in church or whatever. Y'all don't hear me. Let me repeat it. Let me say that again. He is only a reflection of who you're being in your life currently. Hello? Do you get what I'm saying? That's what you're attracting. Now, if you attract a man, that's really there for you. Your vibration has changed. You are, you're loving yourself. You're giving of yourself in a good way. And you're attracting someone really, really good because you're feeling really, really good. And the thing is, if you happen to attract someone like that for whatever reason, but yet you're conscious, you're aware enough to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, I... Mm -mm this i must correct this right now i don't know what i was thinking at the time but it's time to shift to change that energetic level to a frequency 100.00 a frequency whatever that frequency is for you that states that sends out to the universe in a thought form no this is not it however his presence, again, is a reflection of where you are vibrationally or where you were because anything that is manifested is old news. You, we are constantly shifting, so anything manifested is old news. That vibration is all, already out there. That thought form has already thought and manifested that dog. So now, within your awareness, again, it's all about you. None of this is about that man or that dog. It's all about you. So it's about you to reflect upon yourself and say, my goodness, how can I change this? This is not what I want. And don't be bamboozled into the idea that, oh, wow, you know, he's, yeah, he's kind of rough around the edges. He doesn't treat me like this or that. But sex is good. I feel good when I'm around him most of the time. Yeah, sometimes he doesn't show up or he calls me out of my name. 
he calls me a bitch or or um, he's a little mean to me he doesn't show up on time or sometimes he just doesn't show up um, you get the picture if you see all of that why do you stay around him? you don't think you're worthy when you truly truly begin to know that you're worthy you will not allow any of that and if it's in your life now you will let it go but it takes courage it takes conviction it takes self-love and unconditional love for yourself to say I will not accept this in my life anymore and begin to tell the story of the man the type of man that you truly desire now, let me express to you what unconditional love is. Unconditional love means that there are no conditions under which I will love you. No conditions under which I will love you. You don't have to be tall, fat, skinny, um, look a certain way. We can love each other unconditionally. Now, it does not mean just because you love someone unconditionally that you're going to be with them. It only states that I love you the way you are. You don't have to change for me. You change because you want to change and vice versa. Don't expect someone to tell you that you have to lose weight, gain weight, wear your hair this way, don't act like this or be that way. Dictate to you how your life should be because that, that's not love. That's obsession, possession. You get it? It's, it's, that's not love. Unconditional love is when that man embraces you as you are and not because you have a fat ass or big breasts or nice poppy eyes, or whatever you want to call it, or this or that, and you do. He's going to love you for your mind, for your substance, for all of that. A lot of times, we women get so caught up in, oh, I got a big butt, or I have this, and I have that, and look at her, boy, I know she gets a lot of men. Now, the interesting thing is, do you know that seduction, seduction has nothing to do with beauty? Think about it nothing to do with beauty it has to do with that energy that you're emanating that confidence your swagger the way you enter a room right the energy the love that you put out into the world that's how you seduce that's how in other words you draw it into you that's how you pull life and light into you now, the fat ass and all of that stuff, which is beautiful because, listen, women, we come in so many shapes and sizes. It's beautiful, but trust me, don't get caught up in that because understand, if it was just about that, every voluptuous or woman that's really beautiful or gorgeous and this and that, all of us would have a relationship. And hello, where is he? I, I don't see him back there. Where is he? You know why? Because you'll look in the mirror and you'll say, mirror, mirror on the wall, what the hell I don't have a man. I look so good and I have no one. Ask yourself that. Why? And again, this is not about you must have one. Again, this is how, how to attract a man versus a dog. So these are the questions you have to ask yourself. If you want to attract a man, a really good man, a man, and when I say man, I mean with a capital M, even more so, capital M, capital A, capital N, exclamation point. Because there's a difference between a boy and a man, and a man and a dog. So when, again, when you look in that mirror and you ask yourself, why am I single? Why am I without you know, a really good man in my life. Why am I going through this? Why, 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 why? You're looking at the reason. It's you. Some thought that I was going to dog men. I don't dog men. I don't like dogging anyone. Now, that's not to say that some of them mistreat us, but they only do to us what we allow them. Sometimes we think that we have to be a certain way for them, right? That we have to allow them to um, slip up, miss dates, 
not call, not do what they say they're going to do. You have to set boundaries. A man is not going to respect you if you have no boundaries. Don't think that if you sit and wait and um, take all the you know, crap, the bullshit, that he's going to think you're a good girl. Sorry, no. He may think you're a little slow. He may think you are um, vulnerable. Now, vulnerability, I'm not talking about ignorance or, uh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. When I say vulnerable, let me change the word because vulnerability can be a sign of strength too. When you're opening up your heart and you're willing to be there in that relationship to share who you truly are, that, that sense of vulnerability you're going to require, but he may think that you are just maybe perhaps weak for him and in in, in the art of seduction, which I've attached um, part one of the art of seduction in an audio piece, watch, I mean, listen to that later, it explains it so perfectly. So I'm not going to botch it up or anything. I have it in my head. But again, the art of seduction, it's so much of, of, of uh, some of the things that the games that, that male-female you know, relationships, how we interact with each other. So much of it is in this book. Read the book. And, I mean, it's more for your education, for your information, for your knowledge. I read the book. I'm reading it over and over to just gain clarity on how people, again, in relationships, since we're talking about relationships, how that art is used. There are certain roles that are played in this art, but it's good to educate yourself. Read. Get away from the television. Read, read, educate yourself, get the, the information so you can empower yourself. Again, that's what Raise Yourself is about. Raise yourself, raise your vibration, raise your understanding about life, about yourself. So listen later and um, educate. In addition to the art of seduction, I've also, um, I have some clips of uh, Louis Farrakhan, which is incredible. Powerful. He talks about our being strong women, black women, white women, whoever, whatever, race, creed, ethnicity, whatever. But I'm going to talk about black women for a minute, about being strong black women. Strong in the sense that we're not exposing ourselves, wearing low-cut tops and exposing, showing all these men out here who are not worthy of seeing all of our goods. These things are for that one that you'd like to direct that love to, that passion to, the one who's taking care of you in many, many ways, honoring you, respecting you. But if you're out there showing everything to every man, it loses its splendor. They become desensitized to it. There is no appreciation for it. So honor yourself by covering yourself, wearing clothes that are presentable. When a man sees you with a, a mini skirt showing half your ass in the street, yeah, they're looking. You're going to get get a lot of hollers and a lot of attention. But the question is, do you want that type of, of attention? A respectful man will say, baby, you, you don't have to do all that. He's trying to tell you something, but sometimes a woman may take it as an insult. Like, why are you judging me? He's trying to give you something to say, look, you don't have to do this. I'm a man. These men don't respect you. Please cover yourself up. Please cover yourself up in a presentable way. I mean, we, we are by nature. Men are fascinated by us. Steve Harvey, I have a clip um, also about him and, and his, you know, what he, he talks about, um, Act like a lady, think like a man. Wonderful information. Wonderful. I have no Jones. He talks about men, women, and T.D. Jakes. I just in, included as many men as I could as to not drag this out to like four or five hours. Um, I 
I, 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 I just want you to, it is my wish, my dream, my desire, my hope, my prayer that you will look more into yourself. Take care of yourself and then you will attract that man, that true capital M-A-N exclamation point, that true man who truly cares for you. And ladies, please, you know how we can get with the mouth, yop, yop, yop. We can just go on talking and talking and talking, trying to mold him and train him to be who we want to be, but he's a man. Let him be who he is. If you attract the man, trust me, he will know who he needs to be. He doesn't need you nagging him. Let me tell you, when I was married, and I apologize to my ex-husband. I apologize to you. I apologize to you because I, when I think about all of the lectures, you would have thought I was a college professor. I was up there. I had my, let me see if I have a, I don't even have a pointer, but like I said, I will use this. Remember Pee Wee Herman down in the, the basement? Exhibit A. I mean, I was into it. I was into it, and I'm telling him who he needs to be and why. And this went on sometimes for two, three hours. My poor husband back then, he used to be, he was trying so hard. He's like, yeah, I understand. Now, literally, it looked like he did that, like he just passed out because he just, he was like, my goodness, and he would just listen. Sometimes he would be standing up, and I would see his legs just buckle, like trying to stay awake because after a while, it becomes hypnotic. It's like, here she goes again. She's teaching me. Wait until you listen to T.D. Jakes about how we... Oh my goodness, and it's so sad. We don't mean to do it, but we sometimes we want to be a mother to our men. They don't need mothers. They need mothers. They need women. They need partners. They need wives. You know, they need someone that's going to stand face to face, side by side with them. But it, it took my took experience to learn. I had I had to go through it. And I had to complain and, and think that something was wrong with him and pointing at him if he would only do this. Not realizing what I know now. It has nothing to do with him. Now this is not to say that what he did was right and he was all knowing, almighty, you know. No, I'm not saying that. But see, when you take responsibility for who you're being, hold yourself accountable. As, as Michael Jackson says, I'm looking at the woman in the mirror. I'm looking at the man, the man in the mirror. So you look at the woman in the mirror. Change your ways. If you want to see the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. That is up to you. So now, what do I do? I, I reflect. Am I perfect? Of course not. I mean, I'm perfect in my own right, in my journey, per se because I'm on the path that I chose. So that's perfect within itself. I'm not gonna make myself wrong for who I am. And that's not what this is about, making yourself wrong. What it's about is making yourself clear, aligned, loving yourself, understanding who you are and why you are, why you exist. Ask the big questions. So, the other thing I want to cover is competition. Guess what? This is the secret of the century, or one of them. You are not in competition with another woman. Why? Because again, if that energy, well not if, that energy that you're emanating is coming from you, hers is coming from her, mine is coming from me, whatever I'm putting out into the universe, I am going to attract that. I don't care how fine, beautiful, and big this, and shapely that, and long this, or short that, or skinny that. She has nothing to do with me. You have nothing to do with me. Only I have everything.
anything to do with me. I can admire another woman's beauty without feeling threatened. I'm not threatened by you and you should not be threatened by me. Or Sarah, I want to be more like her. Like I said, I am the example. I'm a living example of caring for me. But only an example. You are going to exemplify who you are in your own way. And that's all I expect from you. I am the way, the light, as Jesus said. You are the way, the light, as Jesus said. Right? This is not about religion. This is just quotation. Quote, we are all the light, the way. Trust me when I say that. You are the light and the way because there are people who will follow you based on what they believe that they want to perceive. They want to perceive that, wow, I see something in her that I like. That's because it's, it's an attraction. It's a natural attraction within them. So you can be the light to someone else and the way to someone else. It is my prayer that I am the light and the way to many people. But once they see the light and the way, of course, create your own. But sometimes we, we need to see that example. That's just human nature. We need to see that example to know it's possible to give us permission to shine. So shine, shine in your, own, in your own light, on your own stage. Don't look at someone, you can use it, like I said, as an example and say, wow, I like the way, I like her style. Or, you know what, she is in shape. I, I, I really want to be in better shape. I want to take better care of myself. That's what it's about. But when you start competing and comparing, you can knock yourself down. I mean, if you look at Kim Kardashian, as beautiful as she is, yeah, she's beautiful, but that what does she have to do with me or, or with you? She's going to attract the type of men that in which she emanates that type of energy. We're all on different energetic levels. Manage yours. Mind your business. Stay in your own lane. So, what I always say is what's for me is for me. All I have to do is show up, ready, able, and willing. Because what's for me is for me. I don't have to fight for it. Do you get that? I don't have to compete for it. All I have to do is align with it. But first get clear on what it is I want and why I want it. Get passionate about it. Get inspired by it. Inspiration is so powerful. That is why I do this. I have moved from desperation, desperate states of mind. And that's not to say that in a blink of an eye I can be in, an, in, an, in a desperate state of mind, but it will not last long. I may go in the valley. I trust will go to the top of the mountain again as quickly as I've gone down because I've trained myself and it's so important to train yourself to recognize that the darkness does not have to stay with you all the time. Turn on that light however you have to turn that light on through meditation, through something like this. Find it wherever you can. Use every trick that you need to, to, to use in your life to manifest what you desire, to stay in a, a good, happy, joyful, inspirational state of mind, whatever you have to do, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Maintain that. So, also understand that there is going to be contrast in this life. You're going to have challenges, but it's up to you to maintain that awareness again of who, who am I being? I want to attract this type of man. Who am I being right now? Am I being a bitch? I like saying it like that because, what's his name, Kevin Hart, he says it. Don't be a bitch. This is funny. This is our moment, right, ladies? I love Kevin Hart. Funny. Anyway, so am I being a bitch or, you know, am I being someone who's open and um, uh, willing to share my heart, myself, my ear, my emotions? Because some of us aren't emotional, emotionally available for men. Because we're so stuck on what happened to us. Sometimes we want to talk to him about that. He doesn't want to hear that crap. Men are very territorial. They don't want to hear about what a 
another man did to you and how you feel and now you're guarded and you don't know and maybe, oh, not this time, next time, see me next year, see me tomorrow. And you're just like, what the hell? You get my point. So that's why you have to clean the slates, clean the slate of those of that old baggage of what happened then. Work that out, sister, work it out. Work it out. Now, with men, okay, the male species, the wonderful, fabulous, sexy. Don't you just love muscles? Some of us do. I do. I don't know what you like, but think about it. What do you like? I mean, a nice, chocolatey, muscular one. He can be cream, too, because I'm cream, you know, caramel. He can be that. I don't care as long as he loves me and I'm attracted to him and we get along, right? So think about that, the male. Let's think about the male for a minute. This is a huge topic. And again, um, T.D. Jakes, Noel Jones, Louis Farrakhan, Steve Harvey. And do your own research. There's so much more out there. I got all this from YouTube. Go on YouTube, do some research. Sort of get into the minds of men and also in the minds and hearts of women. See what men are saying about women, what women are saying about women, but most of all, what are you saying about yourself? So back to the male, um, trust that a lot of them, we've been through some stuff, they've been through some stuff too. We've not had the best uh, female examples in our lives. Some of us have, some have not. We've not had that education, uh, given that wisdom, that knowledge, and some of it we, we were given, but we've not always followed it. So you, you compile all that, right? So now think about a man. T.D. Jakes says it is hard being a man. And we don't understand what it's like to be a man. Again, this is not to excuse them. Again, you have to guard yourself and, and, and use your sense of discernment, your, your intuition, and choosing a man to work on yourself, but now to men, they they go through a lot. Again, watch the videos. They can explain it better than I can, but just in understanding the acknowledgement that they go through so much in this life, so much that they have to face. Imagine someone looking at you constantly to be the example. Here we are looking at them saying, what are you going to do? It's like, wow, what am I going to do? That's pressure. Some of them, well, the man himself, who knows who he is, who honors himself, who loves himself, who cares for himself, will do the same for you because you will be a reflection of who he is. The dog, on the other hand, he's the male who doesn't have an example or didn't have an example or both, doesn't understand nor love himself enough carrying a lot of anger so he, he he projects it on you if you allow that he's just being a reflection of you so that's why if you build yourself up you're going to attract that man who will truly love you and honor you don't sell yourself short by attracting a dog and I say a dog in, in reference to a dog basically just goes off of, you know, I want that, I want that. You see how dogs are. I have a, a German Shepherd. He doesn't care what he sees. He'll step all on my feet. He's, he's not a gentleman. Oops, sorry, excuse me, Georgia. I know you feed me and everything, but ooh, I'm I, sorry. Did I step on you? How are you feeling today? No. Of course, when I come in, he's all happy and everything. But boy, let me tell you, let a female dog pass by. They'll hump, whatever. That's their instincts. That's how they're built. They'll step on your feet, jump on you, not realizing their weight. It's happened to me and my dog. He just push you. He, sometimes his, his claws will grow and scratch me by mistake. Um, just not mindful, not aware. Um, and I'm just talking about the uh, awareness in terms of, remember Godzilla? It, it said that Godzilla... He just wanted to get something to eat. He didn't really concern himself with what he's stepping on, crushing buildings and knocking things over. He's just, you know, I just got to get there. And for a man who's not aware of the beauty, the gentleness, 
the sensual, the sensuality, the femininity of a woman. Some of them are just like, I just want that sex. I just want to, you know, get, what do they say these days? I mean, hit it or whatever. I mean, back then it was get laid. I don't know. Um, they just want to hit it. They just want that. Um, now, speaking of which, Steve Harvey talks about, you know, waiting 90 days. That's a controversial topic. I myself, I understand why he says that. From a spiritual perspective, I would say what it means to me is the 90 days gives, it gives both of you time to get to know each other, as opposed to just running with the passion, um, the lust, sometimes it is lust, without running into that just colliding and then once the collision happens the flames they die down and they fizzle out and then there's a little left you know when the dust settles it's like okay so what do we have now we've not really talked about much now we have to try to build but now there's not that that big explosion that I'm expecting that expectation of wow you know once I get to know her I'm going to get the ultimate gift. It's already been gotten. What do you do next? Some men will say, oh, well, you know, I'll wait the 90 days if all I'm having sex with everyone else and whatever. Now, the key is, while you're waiting the 90 days, have some wine and dine you. Do nice things for you. Ask questions, get to know about him, how he treats his family, how he treats his mother, the relationships he has, what are his dreams, his thoughts, his ideas, his ideals. Get to know the person that you're allowing in your bed. Don't be flattered by, oh, you're beautiful, I love your body, your ass, and you just this and that. And you already know that you're beautiful. You already Do you need him, to someone to keep telling you that? We, got, we have to get out of that too. We have to realize when it's just flattery because you're trying to get something. And if the man truly cares for you, he will wait. I mean, truly care. If he truly cares and say the 90 days go by, it may turn to 95, 120, six months. I don't know. You be the judge of it, but use your sense of discernment. We have such a great sense of discernment. Our tuition is it's crazy. It's, it's wonderful, but you have to connect with that part of your soul, with that sixth sense, with that power. Connect with your true power and understand. Manage. Embrace your power and stop looking outside of you for love. Look within. You must respect yourself. Self-love, there's nothing like it. Nothing at all. Think about the words you say before you say them. Because some of us can be so hot-headed and so defensive and, you know, we'll curse someone out. Some of us more than others, but manage yourself. Manage your emotions. Control of your emotions is the most powerful, powerful aspect. That's the most powerful aspect of your personality. If you can just be quiet. So now you can talk, talk my husband to death. Ooh, and other relationships. I think I just recently stopped. That's a confession. I just got tired of talking. I said, you know what, God? If if this is him, I don't have to do all that talking. You talk to him. I'm tired. Just bring me. You know who I am in spirit. You know that I take care of myself and I love myself unconditionally. You know what it is I desire. Now, the trick to that is, in again, in the now, you'll, you're going to still attract. It's a reflection of where you are. So don't think just like that. Bam, you put it out in the universe. Bam, it's coming. You have to keep in faith, you have to keep believing for that man to come. Someone may come that's not exactly what you're asking for, but guess, guess what? He will help you refine your vision. That is so powerful. 
some of the men that I've been meeting lately since my, you know, um, expiration of my last relationship, uh, May 2012, wonderful guy. Since then, I've met many guys, you know, three, four. Uh, this is July, going into August, so that's 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 a good little track record. But met and, and have gone out, and and what it's doing for me is it's it's clarifying my vibration. It's telling me this is where you are. This is where you are. Manage yourself. And I've been doing quite well. Quite well. So it's sort of like just stay tuned. Stay in tune. Tuned in, tapped on, and or tuned, tuned in, tapped on, and whatever. Just, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. You know, stay tuned. Stay within that frequency that you want. Don't give up hope. I don't care how it looks. If someone annoys you, some guy you go on a date with, just say, I know he's coming. I'm staying faithful. I know he is. I'm getting closer to it. That's what I say. I'm, I'm getting closer to it. And I get excited. I dream about he and I on, on trips together, making love, fantasizing, my dancing for him, my cooking for him, and those, those little things just cuddled up. You know, you know how we do, all cuddled up and we have on our little whatever or nothing and just in his arms. And don't we just love being in his arms? That's like heaven, especially for me. I love muscles. Just, I just look at the arm and I'm like, oh damn, this is so nice. I got all of this. Man, just all, oh, oh, okay. You know what I mean. Anyway, so. And connect with your sensuality. Be that woman. Do you notice when when you've been made love to, when you had some really good sex, what happens? You are just flowing in the office, you're dancing, music is not even playing, but you're just, woo, life is good. Your tone of voice just changes. Again, back to my girlfriend. She knows who she is when I call her. I can tell when she's been with a man. She's like, hi, Georgette, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I was with him. Mm -hmm. It was so nice. I'm like, are you still with him? No, no, no. He's not. Even. She still feels that energy, the energy of that male-female connection, that collision that's so beautiful. But that's what it brings out in us. We need that. We need, but we need it with the right man, the man who's gonna love us. We need that. It makes us feel more sensual sexual more like a woman our femininity comes out we're softer right because the combination of the male and female energy that comes through us because of that interaction of male female as opposed to just connecting with just oh you can't even connect with your female energy now you're acting like a guy you're like defensive and you're ready they are for that for that for most of, of that part that's their energy let them be your protectors, the defenders. Let them carry that bravado. We don't need to do that. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. And not saying that sometimes you, you know, you may have to in certain situations. I'm talking about, you know, male, female. I'm not talking about being out in the world protecting yourself. But I'm talking about with that. You want to be a lady. You want to be able to sit back and relax and say, he's, he got me. He is taking care of me. I don't have to worry about this or that because from his perspective he knows what he needs to do but you have to let him be that and here's a topic many another topic many women don't want you to face submission I used to say oh hell no why do I have to submit to him who is he is he did he is he my father I mean is he like a god on I god to and until I started to read and do research and come to a better understanding that there has to be a natural order of things. Think about it. Do you always want to be in control of everything? Don't you want to surrender some part of yourself to him to let him say, you know what, please, you take care of that. I don't want to do all that. And he'll say the same. There are some things that he doesn't want to take care of that you are naturally built to do. However, you must be willing and able to distinguish, to discern, to know the
the difference between again a man and a dog because you do not want to be led by a man that can't even lead himself that's running ragged that's mistreating you that's disrespecting you that's hitting you that's not a leader that's a tyrant you do not want that so you you must be able to discern and first define what a man is do your research dig deep within come to that understanding of what it is so again a it's a reflection of you it's your mindset and then think about the examples of men in your life how do you feel about your father who was he to you think about that who was he are you looking for someone like him are you looking for someone like him that wasn't too good to you are you trying to make up for something it, it becomes so psychological psycho spiritual more than anything so you really have to look at all of these things trust me i looked at so much i am a writer i'm a reflector i'm a teacher i'm a healer i'm a leader so i had to really look at every well i wouldn't say every as many aspects of myself and i'm still working and you know what's amazing too each and every day every day i discover something new I reflect and I'm so amazed at the lessons, the life lessons that I'm learning because of the relationships that I have, relationships with my children, the people I work with, my family, my friends, my girlfriends. All of those relationships show us more of who we are and who we're choosing to be. They help us to clarify because of that contrast who we want to be. So take the time out. Write your life story of how you want it to be. I can be honest with you and tell you that my life vision, I've created a life vision, and we'll talk more about this at another time, but I've created a life vision for every area of my life. Like I said, I'm a writer, I'm a reflector. I want to know who I am, and I do. I know who I am. However, I'm still learning more about me because of the um, experiences that I'm having. So you must take the time out for yourself. Stop looking on the outside for other people to define you. You define you. So again, look at the examples and um, again, please, whether it's after I'm done, please watch what Farrakhan, Louis Farrakhan and um, Steve Harvey and um, well, what's the other guy's name? Nora Jones, T.D. Jakes. Just listen to what they have to say. You don't have to agree with it. It's going to resonate with you however it re resonates with you. A lot of it, re most of it resonated with me. That's why I put it in there. But you must look at that which resonates with you. But at least I'm sharing that and do more research. There are so many, so many videos on the internet, you know, on YouTube and, and that you can, you know, gather educate yourself gain the information so at least you'll have something to choose from because if our if your say your mental library is limited because you're not reading you're not researching you're not having deep conversations you know full of substance if you're not really reflecting on who you're being in your life what you're having and what you're doing your world can shrink it can become so minimal that you you have just a small library I choose for my library to be huge, the universal library, just to expand, galactic library. I mean, just to go so far beyond that I learn much, so much about myself. So take heed. Uh, the other thing is, um, I know sometimes we're disappointed by men. But again, self-reflection, self-reflection. You must begin with you, gain that clarity of who you are, everything else will follow. And then, um, this is huge. This is something that uh, Farrakhan said, and I so agree because I was a woman who, and I say was, I had to learn a lot, and I'm so glad, because when you're in that state of mind, the state of mind where you really think you know what you're talking about, you really do. We really do. 
that, that applies to everyone. We really, when we're convinced of something, we're so convinced that mm -mm, this is the way it is until, until you are shown the light. And that light may come in an experience that may be very painful for you. And sometimes it's not as painful. It just may be uh, an aha moment. It can be an insp inspirational moment. It can be an experience that you realize, you're like, oh my goodness, look at this. I didn't know that. I mean, when I was married, I wanted him to want a career uh, diff different from what he was doing because it was my vision, right? You know how you try to change somebody to, you have a picture in your head and you're like, okay, you see this picture in my head? Become it. Wrong. And you know what's wrong with that? Like I said earlier, you must be aligned and clear about who you are and you will then attract it. You can't expect that you're not aligned with who you are and clear and now you attract like and you're like, no, 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 that's not what I want. I want you to be something else, really. But this is what you're attracting. How can I be something else and you're that too? I'm a reflection of you. I'm where you are right now. So really think about that. So I had to really check myself. I really had to check myself. And I changed my, I really changed. I'm not saying I was bad. Um, I'm just saying I really changed because I had certain ideas of what a relationship was. And they didn't work. And that's why I, I am so happy that I am where I am now because I know that now the next relationship is going to be powerful. Why? Because I'm more powerful. It's going to be inspirational. Why? Because I'm more inspirational. Anyone who knows me knows that I, I was always positive, always, you know, go-getter and, and, and whatever, but I was very firm too. Um, didn't take any crap. Not saying that I take crap now. But I, I have different definitions and different understandings. I didn't love unconditionally then. I love unconditionally now. Thank God. Thank God. I thank God because now I can, I can allow that man to be who he is. And what it does, it helps me to better see. I have a better vision of, with my allowing him to be who he is, which he's going to be anyway, but my accepting... This is who he is. I don't try to change him. So within that, I can say yes or no. Yes, I do want to be with him. Or no, I don't. Without being upset. And without trying to make him change or we're not going to be together. Without the threats. You know how we can threat. Well, if you love me, you would do this. Or we want to sit them down for hours and preach to them. Or we want to compare them to other people that we really don't know other men. Well, you see how he does it and he does this. We don't know the inner workings of that other man. Because guess what? Half the time, we don't know the inner workings of ourselves. We have to know who we are. We must know who we are. I am so for women. That's why I am so aligned with Raise Yourself. It's about you raising yourself, knowing what you want, gaining that clarity about your life. Trust the rest shall follow. And I believe it's a Bible verse that says something like, put the kingdom of God first and all else will follow. Right, I'm paraphrasing. But really, the kingdom, put this throne, the inner throne, there's a poem that I've written, the inner throne. And, um, it, it basically states that you must understand this is your inner throne. Cherish that inner throne. Do not allow anyone to push you off of that throne. Because when you get up and you walk away to go see what he's doing and trying to fix him, who's, who's sitting at your throne? Who? Who's there? It's empty, void, no one. Stay within yourself. Stay within your lane. lane. 
Mind your own business. Mind your own business. This is your business. You are your business. So, why well, I said a lot. And there'll be more videos. There's so, so many topics I, I'm covering because I love this stuff. It's my passion. I am inspired, so inspired to do this, to share information. So in closing, I'll say this. First, it's your mindset. Just to, just to go over briefly what, what I covered. It's your mindset. You must understand yourself. Second, understand that like attracts like. They are only a reflection of who you are. Also, are you worthy? You're damn skippy, you're worthy. Understand that, know your worthiness, know that. Four, beauty has nothing to do with the art of seduction. So don't think you're all that, and just because you look this way that he's gonna want you over that one. You know how you look at someone, you're like, well, damn, how did she get him? Wrong. All of the inner workings. Don't try to discount, belittle another woman because she has something that you want and you wonder how she got it because you look better or you have this or that. Ladies, it is so much more than that. When you come to the understanding, the realization that it's your vibration, it's the energy that you carry, it's how you carry yourself, it's what you expect in your life, what you command, because I command much of myself and I command my life to be a certain way and it's constantly shifting I accept where I am because I know where I'm going I know what's within me I don't care if it looks like it now tastes like it smells like it acts like it now I don't think about that you know why because a lot of people think seeing is believing but it's actually more powerful the other way around believing is seeing if you believe it eventually you will see it but you must be patient in that. And check this out. Patience is not even needed because it's like you're waiting for something. Your life is happening right now. You're, you are not waiting for anything. It is now. Be present. Be in the now. Be with it. Okay? The next one is competition. There is no competition. What's for you is for you. All you have to do is show up ready, able, and willing. The next, number six, there will always be contrasts and challenges. Just be aware to be able to discern where you need to be, um, what you want, what you don't want. That's what the contrast is for. Number seven, male, the male species, they come in different types. Please know the type that you're attracting and the type that you want. Number eight, females, please. Okay, here we go. You may not want to hear this. Are you a woman? Are you a lady? Or are you what a, a, a male dog, what that dog is? Are you being a whore? Are you spreading yourself out, giving it up to anybody and everybody because of who he is or what you think he's going to do for you, what you think you may get? Are you just giving yourself away, your gift, your fascination, your beauty? Are you throwing pearls before swine? Think about it. Number nine, you must respect and love yourself. Present yourself uh, in the way that will attract that man who respects you. Watch what you say. Honor yourself and honor your mouth because that which comes from your mouth has power your sensuality and your sexuality and your femininity femininity be a lady be a woman enjoy that and when you have a man in your life he will he will appreciate that number 10 again what types are you you re, what what type of man are you attracting he is a reflection of you so sorry but he is 11, think about the examples in, in your life, the examples of men, your brothers, your, your father, um, and really clarify, tell the truth about how you see them and, and how that is affecting you. And number 11 or 12, please watch the videos that are um, right after 
my spiel. Um, and I know the other thing that I didn't cover as, as, thoroughly, as thoroughly is that I know that sometimes you're disappointed in them. But still, send them love. Keep sending them love. Again, it doesn't mean just because you send someone love, you love them unconditionally, that they have to be with you. But if you begin to say, you know what, there are good men out there, and they do love me, that's what you will attract. But if you say, oh, they all dogs, ain't no good men out there, you're speaking it. Your words have power. Your energy will follow those thoughts, and those thoughts will form and manifest. So change your language. told the true definition of a man was to never cry work till you're tired got to provide always be the rock for my fam protect them by all means and give you the things that you need baby our relationship is suffering trying to give you what i never had you say i don't know how to love you babe well i say show me the way i keep my feelings deep inside i Shadow them with my pride. I, I'm trying desperately, baby. Teach just me work how with me. To love. Show me the way to surrender my heart. Girl, I'm so lost. Yeah. Teach me how to love. Yeah. How I can get my emotions involved. Yeah. Teach me. Show me how to love. Show me the way to surrender my heart. Girl, I'm so lost. Start to be strong, never let them think you care at all. Let no one get close to me before you and me. I didn't share things with you, girl, about my past that I'd never tell to anyone else. Just keep it to myself. Girl, I know I lack affection and expressing my feelings. It took me a minute to come and admit this. But see, I'm really trying to change now. Wanna love you better? Show me how. I'm trying desperately, baby. Teach please me work with me. Love. Show me the way to surrender my heart. My heart. Girl, I'm so lost. Yeah. Teach me how to love. How I can get my emotions involved. Yeah. Teach me. Teach me. Show me how to love. Show me the way to surrender my heart. Girl, I'm so lost. Oh. Teach me how to love. to let them tell me what, what to do. teach me how to really show it in show me how to really love you baby teach me please just show me yeah. cause i'm willing to let go of my fears girl i'm serious about all that i say girl i want to love you with all of my heart baby show me where to start teach me how to love show me the way to serve Teach me how to love.